What is going on, everyone? And thank you for tuning in to the second episode of season two of the Ronan Bell Show. Today with me is my guy, Justin Jaworski, who is a Division I basketball player at Lafayette. He's got a real interesting story. Kid's a really hard worker. Make sure you guys really listen and pay close attention to what he says. Other than that, guys, make sure you hit that follow button so you stay notified whenever a new podcast comes out. And that's pretty much it for me right now. So uh, cue that intro. Justin, what's going on today, brother? What's up, Brandon? How are you, man? Dude, I'm in chilling. How's uh, are you guys like playing ball or like what's going on with that? Yeah, so Patriot League is one of the only leagues that pushed their season back. So first game, we're good to go as of January second. Hey, man, at least like you have something there already. I just feel bad for all the other athletes, especially like Division Two and Division Three that already got like their seasons canceled. Right. I mean, yeah, it's not ideal, but. We just want to play games, so it's better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, of course, man. You just need to get back out on the court, get get back into the flow. Yeah, boss, Not man. Definitely. So uh, before we go into anything else on the show, um, could you just introduce yourself to the audience a little bit? Like, where are you from? Where'd you go to high school, obviously? Yeah, so uh, my name's Justin Jaworski, obviously. Um, I graduated from Perkiom Valley in 2017, uh, played football and basketball there, decided to stick with the basketball route. Now I'm a senior at Lafayette College um, with a possible fifth year um, based on my knee injury and with the coronavirus situation. Not sure if I'm going to use that yet. But, yeah, so senior at Lafayette, studying economics and uh, captain on the basketball team there. Yeah, man. So, like, in high school, uh, for all the listeners out there, Justin was actually our, our high school rival. And let me tell you, whenever uh, ju- you heard the name Justin Jaworski, we we never wanted to play against that kid. <laughs> he, uh, I mean, just going into high school, I mean, how do you think that you've changed as an athlete from, like, your high school self as now into, like, a college athlete? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of the same, but just trying to develop what I've already worked on. Um, just athletically um, getting a little bit stronger things along on the along those lines but yeah nothing too different uh, just trying to keep that same work ethic that I've had throughout my whole life bring it into college I mean going into like playing two sports in high school do you think that really helped you at all at least for the work ethic standpoint yeah and I'm still like whenever guys ask me about it now I'm still a big advocate for people playing two sports now that I'm in the at the college level and I can kind of see behind the scenes of recruiting. A lot of coaches like that two sport aspect to kids. Like, I mean, that cross training aspect, like the football, the toughness, the physicality that translates into basketball. So I think that was definitely big for me, just kind of both sports kind of working together. Well, especially because like, if you can play two sports, I mean, it shows that you're well-rounded. I know that you're kind of, uh, I know that you're a smart kid to everyone out there. I mean, I know you're a very humble kid as well, so you don't want to say it often, but like doing schoolwork in high school and then being able to balance that with football and basketball, it really helps you out for the next level because you have even less time than you did in high school to get all your work done and then still go to practice, still go to games, things like that. Not exactly. I mean, time management, especially in college, is so huge for us, especially when we're missing a lot of classes for road games, we're traveling, taking flights places. So you really need to be on top of your stuff because you're already at a disadvantage from everybody else playing sports. And then you lose that extra time on top of when you're in season too. Oh yeah, man. It's, it's nuts. It is really nuts what you do to balance all of that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that's what we signed up for though. That's what I like. <laughs> about it. <laughs> I mean, Hey, keeps you busy. keeps you out of trouble. Exactly. What made you choose uh, basketball really over playing football in college? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty simple for me. Um, I just love basketball. I, I know I loved it more than football. I enjoyed putting the work into it. And I was higher recruited for football. I was pretty under the radar, under the radar as a basketball guy. Didn't have an offer until March of my senior year, which if you're not familiar with that, is super late in the process. Signing day is usually around... December, January. So I kind of bet on myself there, let about 15 plus football offers slide just to kind of hang on to see if I get that opportunity to play basketball. So 
yeah, I bet on myself knowing that I loved basketball just much more than football. Did the like did the amount of offers that you had for basketball ever like really discourage you? I I wouldn't say it discouraged me. I would say it kind of it just pissed me off. Um, it motivated me. Just I mean I still carry that with me right now. I mean all but one school in our league didn't offer me. So every time we play them, it's like all right, you didn't offer me. Let's get to it then. And I mean you're the thing that I want to make a point of is that. You know, outside of basketball, I feel like that you're a completely different person. You have kind of a different, um, kind of a different mark on people. Because when we would play Justin in basketball, we just thought he was this cocky kid. You know, he's always looking for the foul call. But the thing is, when when you're out when you're outside those lines, you're this you're just a nice kid. You do everything that you're told. You try and you know, you try and be nice to everyone. How do you think that you manage that, like that big difference? No, one of my, I mean, one of my biggest mentors in my whole life is Kobe Bryant, just the way he carried himself. And one of my favorite things he used to say is there's a difference between who you are and what you are. So like who I am, I try to be like a genuine person, just try to be kind to people. But like when I'm on that basketball court, it's, I'm going for blood out there. Like I want to win. I'm a competitor. I'll do whatever it takes to win. So just kind of once I'm in those lines, it's not exactly who I am. It's just what I'm doing there. I'm just being a competitor. Yeah, it's not personal. I mean, I'm sure that you hate that guy on the other on the other team for 40, 48 minutes or ever. Was it 40 minutes in college? But like after that, I mean, it, it's it's a game at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, not at all. And I mean, all those like high school rivalries that you kind of mentioned before, like I work out with all those guys off the court. So, like, once we're out of season, we're all boys. But once you're playing, like, you're at each other's throats. And that's what I like about it. I just like competing. Well, you have to be. I mean, when you're playing in high school, obviously it's competitive. But if you want to be at that next level, it's a whole different kind of competitive mindset. I mean, you're trying to – you're really just trying to take down that other team. At the end of the day, you want to put your foot on their throat. Not exactly. And especially for someone like myself, that's not oversized, not overly athletic, like that mental aspect that I bring to the game is definitely super important for me more so than other guys that can just kind of dominate off their athletic ability. Oh yeah. I mean, how, how tall are you, Justin? What? Six foot on a good day? Six two? Yeah. I said, um, listed as six two in our book. So probably more like six one. So he's six three in Tim's. That's all that, that, that that's all that matters. But um like I that's that sh- goes to show you. I mean, Justin, how on like how hard do you honestly think that you worked in high school? Like just to be able to get that couple of offers to play in a division one school. No, I mean extremely, extremely hard. And I like to tell people if if everyone worked as hard as I did, I wouldn't have got those offers. Just because people start at higher floors than you. Like Oh yeah. Somebody that's super athletic, they're already on people's radar just because they have a 40-inch vert or they're 6'10". But, like, for someone like myself, if everybody put in as much time as I did, like, I wouldn't have a chance. But that work ethic, I think, helped me leapfrog those people. And that's what separates these Division One athletes from someone that's going Division Two. Like, you said you said yourself that I, you're undersized. You got to do something extremely well. What do you think that... You know, I know in um, in high school, shooter, obviously, but you also kind of man the floor. Like, you were the floor general. It's like, in basketball terms, that's what they like to call it. But do you think that translated a lot into the next level, or did you have to kind of find a different role? Nah, so right, right from when I got to Lafayette, shooting was, like, definitely the biggest thing for me still. I mean, if you can make shots, if you can stretch the defense, there's pretty much a spot for you anywhere. But... I want to be known as more than just like a shooter. I want to be a complete basketball player. So I think I've really developed on the defensive end, being able to get other people involved, rebounding the basketball, just leadership aspects, just things along those lines to be more than just a shooter, to be a player. And that take, and that doesn't happen overnight. Like to anyone out there. I mean, yeah, you have to work extremely hard. Take it from Justin. I mean, the kid kid worked his tail off all throughout high school, and now like working out in college just to be able to get a, a starting spot. I mean, get a better role than 
what you are. I mean, there's always that, even though your teammates, there's that guy in front of you. And at the end of the day, your teammates, but you're all like, you want to play. You want to be on that court. Yeah. And there's, there's no, there's no finish line with it really. So like I, I started my first game as a freshman and that was cool, but I didn't get on the all freshman team and I thought I should have, I didn't get it, whatever. So that pissed me off. All right, you know what? There's five freshmen in front of me that they thought were better than me. So my sophomore year, I get on the all league team. I'm one of two sophomores on the all league team. All right, well now I need to beat out this kid. Me and him, Jordan Burns, we also get all league as juniors. So now he's preseason pick to be player of the year for our senior year. Well, all right. Well, now I have to compete for him for that too. So there's, there's no finish line to it. You're just always striving. For yeah. I like, level. yeah. I like to make the point, like the, the slogan that I use on this podcast is, is keep on keeping on because straight up, I mean, when you go through bad times, you got, you got to keep going, you got to move forward and you got to get through that. But the thing is when, even when you are having these goals accomplished, there's always another goal that you can strive out to get. Not exactly. And I think I'm a pretty ambitious kid. I set my goals pretty high. I hold myself to a pretty high standard too. So I think that's really just helped me kind of propel to where I'm at. And obviously I have a lot more that I want to get accomplished. So not ready to just kind of look back and look at all my accomplishments. I can do that when I'm done playing, but for right now, I definitely have a lot more that I want to get to. And I mean, like, why not shoot for the stars? Like, yeah, why not? I don't feel like looking back when I'm done being like, you know, what? I could have, I could have done more. I could have accomplished just a little bit more if I worked a little bit harder, if I tried, if I put in a little bit more time. So might as well put it all in now and see how far I can take it. Yeah. I love it. I mean, why, why have any regret, regrets at the end of the day? Not exactly. I mean, how much do you think that the the chance just to play? Obviously, you said that you didn't get like a lot of offers to go to to go to college and play basketball. You were more of a football guy, how, or for, more of a football guy. How much how much did the chance like mean to you to be able to go play at a Division One school? Yeah, I mean, it's a blessing. Um, that's been the the dream, the goal since really I started. So to get that offer, just super appreciative of it from Lafayette and Coach O. Um, They took a chance on me when a lot of people didn't, when a lot of people didn't think I was good enough to. So I'm just kind of working my tail off to to prove him right, to prove that his chance on me was worth it. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, you look back out, you look back on all those, on those hard nights and where you had to stay up a little bit late to finish your homework because you were working on basketball every day. Like it's worth it. It's worth it at the end. No, definitely. I mean, everybody, everybody sees, the stats and the games, they see the highlights, but they don't see all the, all the little stuff behind the scenes. So definitely when you, when you get some recognition, when you get some awards, it just makes all, all that pain, all that little stuff worth it. Well, and the thing that I, the, the thing that I like about you, Justin, is I know a lot of athletes post their workouts and stuff and they show how they show how hard they work, but Honestly, you, you kind of move in silence a lot. It's kind of, it's all under the radar. No one really knew how hard you worked, but when, when the game, when the lights came on, when we were ready to tip off, I mean, it showed. No, definitely. I, that is something that I really don't like about today's game and today's social media environment. I mean, like put your work in and do what you have to do to be successful, but Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see your, your workout mixtape when you're going against a cone. Like, just get your work in, do what you have to do, and, like, just play play because you love the game, not because you want attention from other people about it. That's that's not me. I mean, at, like, who cares? Who cares? Honestly, who cares? Right. If, that's what you were saying. Like, who cares that you can dribble around the cone? No one cares that you're working out. Everyone just sees that on Instagram, sees that on Twitter or whatever, and then scrolls right past it and moves on with their lives. It doesn't stick in their brain or Not anything. Exactly. And I think, especially right now, when you're going to get a whole bunch of seasons that happen without fans, without all that attention, you're going to find out who really loves the game, who really puts in work to it, and who is just playing for attention, who's playing for that that crowd noise or whatever. So I think you're really going to find who loves the game. Well, yeah, especially because there's no there's no cheer. And I'm sure it's going to, when you step out on that court for the first time again, it's going to be a lot, it's a real different feeling than, uh, than it is right now. I know some of the other uh, Division One schools kind of tipped off uh, this past week. 
And that's what like a lot of their comments were that it is really weird not playing with any fans or anything. Cause that's honestly, I mean, I don't know how, like if you go to a game at Lafayette, is there like a lot of kids there? Yeah. I mean, we have like a nice, like the community really shows out well. And then, I mean, a bulk of our season is kind of over that winter break. So we miss, we miss those college kids a lot, but like once they're back late January, February, like it's, you're getting a couple thousand every game. So it's definitely a fun environment. Especially that's beneficial to you. Is that, that other team walking in there. I mean, when they see all those fans are like, well, well, we better like, what are we going to do? Like we better not mess up or we, we're going to really hear about it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's a real, that's a real thing for a lot of people. And for me personally, I actually, I like the away environment a little bit more than the home environment. I kind of thrive off of that, that negative energy. So for me personally, I like when we're on the road, they got a packed out gym. I just like, I like that. I mean, sometimes you got to love the hate. Nah, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun to just kind of take that negative negative energy, use it as as motivation, a little bit, little bit of energy. I love love silencing crowds. I think that is that's so much cooler than like the the roar of your home crowd. Yeah, Justin did that enough to us in high school, but we're, <laughs> we're not gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna gloss over that section. But uh, but uh, but the point that I'm trying to make is that you know try and make the the positive out of it. I mean, even though you don't got 20,000 kids yelling your name or 1,000 people yelling your name, I mean, I'm sure that it's a lot more rewarding to hear no one talk at the end of that game because you're blowing out the team that you're playing in their home crowd and just stomping on their neck because, you know, you won. You killed them. Like, yeah. I feel like that's way more rewarding. Not yeah, There's something about just taking that, taking their energy away and your team thrives off of it. It's just very, very rewarding. What do you think the biggest difference between the high school game and the college game is for you? So like the first thing that you notice as soon as you get on a division one level is the size and the speed is just completely different. So it's the same game, but instead of when you're driving to the rim and you're finishing over six, two in high school, you're finishing over seven foot now and not just like lanky seven foot, you're finishing over seven foot two fifty with like athletes down there. So the game's the same, but it's just the size and the speed of guys is just a whole new level. And you have to get used to that. You have to get your body right before the season starts. Cause once the season starts you're you're too late at that point. And especially because I mean, when, where we played was in the pack and there was not many, not many kids like Justin that just came in and really was on that division one pace. Now you're playing the best kid from each school. In the no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I got thrown right into the fire too. My first game was against that Villanova team that won the national championship. They had seven NBA guys on that roster. So I definitely learned that one quick that it is a new level once you're in the, the division one level. What was that like first time getting in the game like for you? Like when you, when you really, when it really comes down to it, was it all like, was it worth going to a division one school, really kind of giving up football, like looking back on it now, do you think like you made the right decision? No, absolutely. A hundred percent. I made the right decision just because I know, even if I was super successful at army for football or at whatever, Boston college for football, that would be cool. But I know that whole time I'll be thinking about, man, I wish I was playing basketball because I love basketball. I love putting in that work. So like, Football practice, I could not stand it. Games were cool. Could not stand football practice. But, like, I genuinely look forward to going to basketball practice, to putting in my own workouts beforehand. So, 100%, I know I made the right decision taking that basketball route. And I think that the point that I like that you're making is that you got you got to be passionate about something that you want to do, especially when you're going to put that much time into. I mean, how many times you probably practice how – 300 days out of the year, 330 days out of the year. Yeah. I'm mean, Listen, I tell everybody, if you want to play in college, it's not just like, all right, I'm going to go play. Like you have to love it or you're going to be miserable. Like, are you willing to give up your Christmas break to be in the gym? Or is that going to bother you when you're at school on December 25th and everybody's at home? So you just have to be willing to, to make those sacrifices if you really, if you really do love it. 
Yeah, there's sacrifices in anything that you do, no matter no matter what it comes down to. I mean, if you want to go to school, you're obviously at the. There's a lot of money in that. The you could take that into any um, context that you want to put it in, and just being able to you know fight through the hard days is that's what I think the where the real people come in that really love what they do. I mean, sometimes the hard days is what really get you through through your college experience, get you through that. Um, get through, through those bad times. I mean, you got you got to experience the hard times. Happens to everyone. Happens to every yeah, athlete out there. Yeah, absolutely. Got to embrace that adversity. And I mean, that's all. That's all part of the dream too. That whole, the whole process is really like that. That's the dream. Like all the rewards is cool, but the everyday aspect of the work you put in, going through the tough times. I like for me personally, that the process is the dream rather than just the the outcome. How much do you think that being on a team kind of helped you out through? Because basketball, basketball is a team sport. It's not like it's wrestling. It's well, wrestling is kind of a team sport. Not like gymnastics. But you, you're on. You're playing in a game with a team, and you're with those guys pretty much 18 hours out of your day. How much do you think that that helped you to just kind of get through college the first couple of years? Because you're in a whole new environment. Yeah. No. It was. Absolutely huge. It was essential to have those, that 15 built in friends that you're already with, especially for me. Like when I went to college, that's the first time I'm being away from home. So that was a whole culture shock for me already. And then that freshman year was really tough. Like we were not a good basketball team my freshman year. And that was really the first time in anything like I was on a losing team. So that was just. So that was really hard, but just having those those 15 guys that you just grow closer to every single year was just huge for me. And then, like, the class above me I was really close to, so it's tough to lose those guys, but just, like, the bonds that we've made with my class, the younger guys now. So definitely just having that that core group with you to support you through all that is just – it's huge. Well, yeah, they hold you. They hold you accountable, and if you're going down, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna tell you, like, bro, it's wrong. Like, you having a bad day. Like, there's gonna you have a support system built in already to a college. Like, especially going to like Lafayette. Like, how many other kids did you really know anyone going there? Like, out of high school or anything? No, or? The only kid was Selwyn. Selwyn being on the football team, so just a completely new environment. So just having those guys that you grow closer to, just spending all that time with, was just. It was just huge for me. Well, yeah, I mean, it's really hard, especially like going in as just a, just a freshman anywhere, or just trying to take on a whole new. I mean, you're really going to a whole new place, and you don't know. Like you've been in a bubble your whole life in high school, pretty much. I mean, once it's hard to get out of that. Once you get out of that bubble, I mean, it's a different story. But that first time getting out of that bubble is is, is really hard for a lot of kids. No, nah, definitely really hard, but definitely. Definitely worth it. I would say the the growth for me as an individual, even though it sucked maybe for a year or two, like being away from home, being homesick, it was definitely worth it. And definitely I would suggest that to, to pretty much ever, anyone. I mean, you were talking about the, the sacrifice earlier, and that's, that's a sacrifice you got to make, especially when you're trying to achieve your goals, like being in, like going to a Division One school and, you know, making an impact on that on that school and making an impact on that team. And it's just like, sometimes that that's the sacrifice you have to make. Sometimes you, you're going to miss home. You're going to miss some things. You're going to miss your friends from home. But at the end of the day, you, you got to do what's best for yourself. Not yet. You got to be willing to get a little bit uncomfortable in anything. If you want to, if you want to take it to the next level. And that's what really shows like who, who you are at the end of the day. The, everyone needs to get uncomfortable at some point, no matter what you do. Nah, a hundred percent got, you have to embrace that. That's the only, that's the only, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's an easier way to do it. But for me, <laughs> my personal story, that's the only way to, to grow as a person and as an athlete, as a student, whatever. But yeah, getting a little bit uncomfortable is the only way I've, I've found to do it. With the topic of being uncomfortable, let's, let's go into, I understand that, you know, you had uh you had a pretty bad knee injury. Could you just tell the listeners out there, like what, how exactly that happened? Like, what was that like for you? Yeah. So never, I've never had a real injury in my life. I like, I've gotten banged up, like sprained ankles, whatever, but just a really, really regular play 
We're at Army late February. We're getting ready for the playoffs. Drive to my left. I jump stop, hyperextend my knee. And it's like you hear a pop, and that's it. So it hurt a lot in the moment, but then after that, it doesn't really hurt. So you're kind of left wondering, like, what happened? I can't really stand on it. So the next day, we get the torn ACL, torn medial meniscus, um, fractured growth plate. So just pretty tough injury to to swallow, especially after never experiencing an injury before. So that was definitely really, really tough and something I'm still dealing with. Yeah, and there's like nothing that you can do in in that moment. It's not like you can take a magic pill to just just change it. I mean, you gotta go through it. The, and especially the recovery process is really hard. What did you What did you think that the hardest part? I know you're still going into you're still at like the end stages of it. But what did you think the hardest part of the recovery process was for you? Uh, is definitely the mental aspect is definitely way harder than any of the physical aspect of it. Just because they can, like, you can say, all right, it's a nine month to a year recovery. And that's easy to say right now. But when you're going through it, that's just, it's so much longer than you think. And then, like, you always want, you want to push it. You want to test it when you're at like five months. You feel good for a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, like, the next day, you might feel horrible. And like, all this doubt creeps in, like, uh oh, like, is something wrong? Am I not, am I not progressing how I should be? So just that mental aspect of, just kind of embracing that process the whole way is definitely really, really tough. And I'm still dealing with it right now. Like I feel great when I play and then I get sore and my knee swells up sometimes. So it's just kind of taking it day to day, whatever happens, you just got to deal with it. Well, especially like with, with athletes in general, you're trying to go a million miles an hour all the time just to get like that little bit better at the end of the day. And when you haven't, when you have an injury, I mean, you can't really, it's it's like baby steps all over again. Nah, a hundred percent. And the ACL is just, it's annoying, man. <laughs> you lose a lot of strength in that leg that you have to build back up. Um, building up that trust of it mentally is huge too. So just, I mean, you really, you really, it sounds cliche, but you really have to go like one day at a time and just try to get a little bit better every day. Cause if you try to do it in chunks, it's just, it, it's overwhelming. What did you think really helped you get through the mental aspect of just getting over that injury? Um, I mean, definitely my support system was huge. I mean, just having like my family with me through the whole process, having Paige with me through the whole process, just, I mean, just having those people when I'm like, I'm very, very hard on myself. So if something goes wrong and I get discouraged, I get pissed off. They're kind of there to, give me a little boost to give me some positive energy. So just having that, that support system was huge for me. And that's what, that's the point that I, I was trying to get out at earlier that like there, there will be always someone to help you out. Hopefully. I mean, your friends are your friends, whether you like it, whether you like it or not, your friends are your friends. And there's, there's always going to be someone to pick you back up when you're down. You're not really going through something by yourself, even though you, you do think of it like that sometimes, but you're really not alone at the end of the day. Nah, and I really I really hope nobody's alone going through any of that kind of stuff because, I mean, you can be as macho as you want to be and think you're the toughest guy on earth, but just having people to help you through it is definitely, I think it's essential at least. No, oh, 100%, man. How did you really think that, like, that made you, you know, obviously no one wants to experience an injury, but, like, how did you think that made you stronger both physically and mentally? Yeah, I mean, I took like a couple days when it happened to feel bad for myself. I mean, be like, why me? This sucks. Like, what's going to happen? Am I going to come back better? And then I just decided, you know, like, no, this is just another another bump in my story. Uh, we're going to get over it. We're going to be better on the other side of it. So I just kind of, I kind of looked for other athletes that have gone through similar things or similar injuries and I see them come out on the other side of it. So if they can do it, why can't I do it? So that was, it was just a decision for me. You know, I'm not going to feel bad for myself anymore. We're just going to overcome this. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, obviously everyone's going to go through that, that grieving state at some point. I mean, everyone has that, what was me mindset for a couple of days, especially experiencing something traumatic, like tearing your ACL or anything. But what were you saying? What you were saying was that, um, 
you know, you gotta, you gotta get out of it eventually. And the only thing that's going to get you out of it is you. And that's the, that's the part that I like to make. It, it's really your decision to wake up out of bed every morning. You could lay there all you want, but you have to get up if you want to accomplish something. Not yeah, I mean, for me too, like I've always been an underdog, or at least I try to think of myself as an underdog and like everything I've done. So I just kind of looked at this too, like, all right, this is a new challenge for me. Before the challenge was get recruited and get all league, score 20 points a game, whatever. Now my new challenge is, all right, get back to being 100%, being better than you were before this injury. So it's just, it's more of the same, like press, putting pressure on myself to overcome things, but just in a different a different aspect. Yeah, I mean, life doesn't throw you fastballs right down the middle all the time. Sometimes you got to sometimes you got to get ready for that curveball and if you swing and miss, you swing and miss. I mean, it happens. Happens yeah, to everyone yeah. out there. Yeah, and just got to uh, go go into it 100% and I'll be better on the other side of it, no question. Yeah, well, one day you'll look back on it and be like, like I got through that. Like that was nothing. And, yep. And the uh, if you were if you were going to give like a piece of advice say to someone that went through something like you did, what would that like piece of advice be? Um, I mean, I, I talked about it a little bit already, just taking it one day at a time, but also I would just say like setting goals for yourself is super important. So like you want to have your end goal. So for me, my end goal is, all right, I'm going to come back and I'm going to win player of the year next year. That's my end goal. But setting day-to-day goals like weekly goals is also huge for me so like when i'm going through my running stage at like three months it was a 10-week progression to get back to 100 percent running so just kind of making that five percent bump every single day of all right i'm gonna get a little bit faster i'm gonna get a little bit faster so just like those smaller goals i think is really important yeah no matter what you do it takes time to get good at it yeah definitely in any, in every aspect in life, it's not like everyone's going to walk into an exam and get a hundred on it without studying. I mean, you got to take those progressions. You got to work hard at something. No, nah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, like most of the the stuff I'm going to give you, it comes back to just you got to put the time in before whatever you're doing happens. So you got to put the time in to come back from your injury while you're doing it. You have to put the time in to be good at basketball before your basketball games happen. So just putting that work in is really what I try to mold my life after. Yeah. Prepare, prepare for the stage. Prepare like you're going up in front of a hundred thousand people. Like if that's the mindset you got to have prepare for the biggest thing possible. Like why not going into a little bit about, um, like I know that faith is a b- very big part of you, lo- your life. How do you think that that has helped you throughout, you know, this small time you've had on earth so far? Not it's definitely been huge. And when I like when I decided to take my faith into like my own hands. So like before I would say up to my junior year of high school, it was just kinda like go because your family goes. Until like I really took like responsibility of my faith. It just it changed my my outlook on everything. So like before I'm playing basketball for we talked about it a little bit for attention, for popularity, whatever. And that feels good. And it still feels good for anybody, but like now I'm playing more so to be a servant to God. And like my favorite Bible verse is Colossians 3.23. I write it on my shoes before every game. Um, have it as my phone background. It's whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as if you're serving the Lord, not human masters. So, all right, I love basketball. That's what I do. I'm going to put everything I possibly can into it, all for God's glory and not my own. So it just kind of changed my whole perspective on everything. When the one uh, – I did an interview with uh, former Nittany Lion, uh, Zach, and he was talking. He was a he's a pretty big uh, Christian or Catholic as well, and he was saying that he felt that at the end of the day he was doing a service being like the Nittany Lion, I feel – that that's how you kind of have to have to think about it. Just even from like a non-religious, like I'm not a re- very religious person. I'll be the first one to say it, but you have to kind of think of, there's always something bigger than yourself at the end of the day. I know you, I, I say a lot, you got to worry about yourself before other people, but you, you got to be thinking of it as I'm doing this to accomplish a bigger goal in some 
in some sense. Like you were saying that um, you felt like that basketball was originally for popularity and everything like that. But at the end of the day, you realize that you're doing it for more than just yourself. No, definitely. And like something that's really cool about sports is it brings a lot of people together that would not have been together otherwise. So like the people that I've met playing basketball, like wouldn't have even imagined meeting them without the game. So just bringing us together and then being able to share like aspects of my faith with them, them with me, like building those bonds. It's just the way, the way it all has worked out has been pretty cool for me. Yeah. The, the whole, uh, like I talk about wisdom a lot. It's pretty much the reason I started this podcast and just like everyone really has their own story no matter if you're kind of like on the same path, like you're all basketball players, but everyone went through something before that they got on that court and got on that team. And that's where you like, you really get to learn a lot about more than life outside of whatever textbook you're reading or whatever class that you're taking. I think that sometimes that can help you out more than it'll help you out more in the life aspect. Cause school at the end of the day teaches you how to do something, teaches you how to, you know, be very good at something, but it doesn't teach you anything about how to go through something or what you're going to do after, you know, you experience tearing your ACL or when, you know, something tragic happens. That's what, like, that's why having a support system is very well. Cause you just, you learn so much from everyone around you. Not yet. You're hundred percent. Right. I mean, just the, like the people that I've met through Lafayette and through basketball has just been, really amazing for me. And I know I'm going to keep meeting more people wherever this game takes me. So, I mean, yeah, just that's what's really going to last after I'm done playing. Cause like all the stats and the records are cool, but the people you meet are going to be like the lifelong reward. Oh, a hundred percent. That's the thing that you're really going to remember at the end of the day. You're not going to remember scoring 10 points against that team, wherever it was. You're going to remember, you know, that kid had a real like, dang, you remember when I passed you the ball and you had that dunk? Like, that was crazy. Like, that, <laughs> it's about the human, it's about the human interaction more than anything else than just a number in a, number in a book or whatever you get on a test or anything. You're way bigger than that, guys. You're way bigger than just a number. But um, the thing that I want to, I want to go into next is that, you know, obviously we talked about a lot of your goals. Where do you think your next really big goal is like you're a senior might go in to do another year, but say after college, I know that you're, you're shooting for the stars. So what, what are we thinking, Justin? What, what do you really want to do with your, your, the next step in life as of right now, at least? Yeah. So, I mean, I talked about goal setting, like being very ambitious, but also like realistic goals for me too. So ever since I started playing is, I want to play at the highest level. I want to play professionally. That's what I want my job to be. And that's still the goal. That's still goal number one. And I've been in contact with pretty good amount of agents, a couple NBA agents. And basically what they've said to me is right now in the NBA, the way the game's trended is shooting. It comes at a, comes at a premium right now. Everybody needs shooters. Everybody needs to space the floor. And I'm one of the best in the country at that on the college level. So basically what they've told me is with a good season, I score the ball efficiently. I shoot the ball efficiently. There's going to be opportunities to go do that. Um, Obviously no promise of making an NBA roster, but same thing that I wanted in college. I just want that opportunity. I just want one person to take a chance on me. And I think I can make the most of that. I mean, why not you straight up? Could be anyone. Yeah, why not? I mean, I think I'm. Why not me? I think I can. I can shoot the ball with the best of anybody. I think I put in if uh, the same amount, if not more, work than everybody. So why not me? And if it doesn't work out, there's other there's other options internationally or whatever. But that's that's plan A. I love it, brother. I mean, but hell, I mean that'd be. That'd be sick. I mean, that's like every, that's like every childhood dream. Like when you're nine years old shooting in the driveway and just, you know, you pretend that there's a shot clock and like you're about to win that NBA championship and like just having that, at least the chance, you know, and you're making that chance higher every, every day, at least that you're trying to. And that's what it really comes down to. You know, nothing like you were saying, it's not, there's no promises, there's no guarantees, but you can make a better 
chance of something happening if you put some hard work like hard work in at the end of the day yeah you know know what i'm gonna do everything in my power to get there and if i get there awesome and if i don't then i at least i can know all right you did literally everything you possibly could have yeah i mean that's that's the thing that i like that i like about you justin is that you, you you've said a lot on this podcast that there's there's been no regrets so the question i want to ask you next is just if you had the opportunity to turn back the clock would you do it all over again like would you change anything would you do everything the same what would you do no 100 percent. this is where i i was meant to go to lafayette that was the best thing for me and like the the proof that i have for that the evidence is i could have transferred out and went to play at a whole bunch of different schools a whole bunch of bigger schools but for me, Lafayette took the chance on me at the beginning, and that's who I wanted to stay with. They wanted me first. So, like, these bigger schools, they didn't want me the first time around. That's fine. I don't want to play for you this time around. So I just kind of wanted to stick with the people that, that believed in me from the beginning. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. You got to have, like, the, the support system is huge, but it's also that guy that reaches out to you at the end of the day. And I'm sure that that came in an email, and you were, like, ecstatic. That's like, wow, like, they want me to go play for them. You know, getting that email and everything, getting that like opportunity to at least have a chance at playing in division one level. I love it, man. I mean, you gotta, you, you gotta take what life gives you sometimes. And when you finally have it in your hands to make the decision, I'm sure it feels way better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it feels good to hear the people say, you know what? We missed on you the first time you proved us wrong. And that's good enough for me. Pro- prove everyone wrong. Why not? Why can't you? That's I I love to say it a lot. Like, well, why can't you be the best in the world? Like, why why not? You gotta put work in to do it, but like, why not you? No matter what it is and whatever you're trying to do, why why can't it? Why can't you be the best at it? Yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorite quotes. Um, uh, what's his name? Derek Rose said it a bunch when he was when he was younger in his career. That's Russell Westbrook's big thing now. Is why not me? Why not? So yeah, why not? I love it, brother. So the before uh, before we get in the quick segment, I just want to ask you if there was one piece of advice that you would give to the listeners out there in the sense of wisdom, in the sense of just a piece of life advice, what do you think that that piece of advice would be? Yeah, so whatever it is that you're very passionate about, whatever it is that you really do love that you want to maybe pursue in the future, just be willing to put in more work than anybody else to do it. And I, for me personally, I think if you are absolutely dead set on putting in more work than everybody else, you'll be successful at it. So just really simple for me, find what you love and outwork everybody else. That's, that's a big, I, I love it, brother. And, he, and the thing that I like that you're saying is that you, you need the work out. You need the work better than everyone else. You, you got to put in more work. Because no one becomes the best just by being the best unless you have some God-gifted talent that just puts you over the edge to anyone else. At the end of the day, it it really does come down to how much work that you are willing to put in into your passion and making the sacrifices necessary in order to do that. Not yeah, and that works that works for everything, not just sports. Like sports is an easy example for me, but for people that want to be really good at the piano, play the piano a bunch, practice more than anybody else. If you want to be, I don't know, the best cook, cook more than anybody else, put like, go pursue those opportunities. So just whatever it is that you love, you just got to put more work in than anybody else. It's awesome, brother. I love, I love, love the piece of advice. And I like to finish every show before, uh, before I conclude it with just a quote that you kind of hang around with and you just, you know, you read it a lot, kind of, it means a lot to you and kind of makes an impact on your life. Justin, what would that quote be for you? Yeah. So for me, I mean, since I was a kid, um, it's always been my go-to is my senior quote. If there's a senior quote in college, it'll be that too. <laughs> um, just hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. I just think a lot of people are born very blessed with athletic ability. They're super smart, whatever. But if you're willing to put in more work than that person, I think you can catch up and pass them in anything. Hard work always beats talent. Hard work. You got to put in the time. 
someone's going to lack and you're going to be right there because you've been working hard to overtake that person. Yep. A hundred percent. All right, brother. So before I turn off the mics, I just want to thank you for coming on the show today and just, you know, sharing your story and just t- how, telling the listeners out there a little bit of what it's like to really be that guy that works their tail off and what it means to you at the end of the day. And Justin, before I, we go on with our rest of our night, um, is there anything that you want to plug in? Nah, I mean, follow me on Instagram <laughs> at Justin <laughs> Jaworski. <laughs> go tune in some Lafayette basketball games. What do you yeah, guys, the Leopards? Game, new, new contract with ESPN plus every game's on ESPN plus now. So easy access to the games. Tune in guys, go watch this dude play. Best shooter in the country. You didn't, don't at me. Best shooter in the country. Yes, sir. But, that's, um, that's the goal right there. <laughs> but guys, so that's pretty much it for the show. If you haven't already, go follow me on Instagram at the Ronan Bell Show. Go cop a sweet keep on keeping on hoodie from the RoninBellShow.com. And if that's pretty much all I got, guys, I'm going to have another new episode out Monday and tune in the Wisdom Wednesday as always. But guys, if to anyone listening out there, have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your night and just... Everyone just keep on keeping on.